Hi, Mitch here with Bloodshed Motors. This video is to document the development and design of the new battery pack architecture moving forward for our customers' cars. Uh, with the Zombie 222, we used an air-cooled battery. It was a short-range battery. It's designed primarily for big bursts of power, really rapid acceleration, but not that practical for daily use in a street environment, especially by someone that's not necessarily a battery expert and knows how to babysit the batteries like we did. So, the first thing we did was uh, sit down and come up with a brand new design that was driven by Jack LaPenta and Alan Coaster. Very smart guys. It's a liquid cool design and it's versatile enough that we can uh, take a single battery plan and break it into separate modules to distribute the batteries at different parts of the car. Unlike a Tesla, which had the advantage of being able to build a car around the battery, we have to fit batteries into the existing cars uh, and make it work and still keep the car drivable and safe. Very early on, we realized that the amount of machining that was going to be necessary for these batteries was such that we might as well just step up, make the investment, and get our own CNC machine. So we've done that, and you know, maybe in some of the videos you'll hear me talk about, oh, the first time ever, blah, blah. That's because we're really excited to have our own CNC machine. And the guys very quickly scrambled and learned how to do uh, Fusion 360 and CAD development, etc. And we brought in a guy named Chris to help us out a lot. There's a lot of people you don't see in the video that are instrumental to helping us get this started and, and going. We call that the extended bloodshed team. But uh, this video is that story and it's very poor quality. Uh, I just grabbed the camera when I could remember to to shoot a couple of pieces here and there of the different steps. Sometimes the focus is off. But remember, you're not paying anything for it, so sometimes you do get what you pay for. Anyway, enjoy. So here we have the whole Bloodshed Motors team all gathered around the CNC machine, all excited because we're making the first piece for the first battery with the whole new design, and everyone is excited about that. And so people are just coming in out of the woodworks to join us here. This is the core team and even the extended team. So what we have here is the team's actually running a simulation of the side of the battery that's got the water channels in it. And then if we look over here, the piece is mounted and ready to be cut. So they'll cut the water channels and all the inner pieces first, then they'll do the final cut on the edges. So this will be one of the sides of the pack where the water circulates. We'll probably finish that up in 10 minutes. It's pretty well, cool it's stuff. Gonna run you're gonna run a, you're gonna run a simulation? Isn't that bad. I'll, I'll go ahead and run the simulation. Yeah. Oh, I just want to see it on the screen. Yeah, that's pretty exciting stuff, really. All right, so this is literally the first piece being machined for a Bloodshed Motors battery designed by Jack LaPenta and Alan, who's not here. And I would film this entire thing, but it would take hours and it wouldn't be that exciting. But I'll give you an exciting zoom up of what's going on. Look at that. So here's an update on the battery case, the first product ever made with the CNC at the budget. Dave, would you please blow it off so you can see it? All right, if you zoom in down here, you're going to see that there's actually, let me get my finger where I can find it, that is an O-ring gasket. This is the actual water channel. Very cool. All right, so this is the first piece of the first battery made with the new CNC machine. And uh, this is a system that Jack was key in designing. And here we have Chris, who was the guy that ran the machine. So like on this side, what you're looking at is the actual outside of the battery. And uh, these channels are actually weight reduction channels to eliminate weight. So they flip it over, look on this side, this will be where the actual coolant is circulated through these channels and here are the very, let me zoom in on this, little O-ring slots. And so what will happen is, I think, where's the end where the liquid's going to come in at? Uh, flip it over and we'll see right. it. Yeah, right here. So the liquid's going to come in, circulate, and then go back out. So there'll be two ports right here. Excellent. Man, got to love it. All right, so there's that front piece that we talked about earlier, and now here is the side piece. And as you can see, again, a lot of extra machine work's being done to reduce the weight and eliminate unnecessary aluminum. 
and uh, so there'll be a mirror end of this one on this end another one on that one and another water cool jacketing system will run through the center here but uh, looking good man this is going to be a fine looking piece of technology all right so we're going to talk to jack lapenta jack's one of our team members here who is actually like the designer leading the whole effort behind the water cooled battery and as part of documenting everything i wanted folks to know that building a battery is not the same as screwing four pieces of metal together and sticking some cells in so what are you working on right now jack well we're making we're doing the first operation of making the battery spacers so there has to be two of these for each cell in each battery pack one on each side of each cell and these hold the cooling plate that will pass between each side of each cell and transfer the heat from the cell to these to the cooling plates. Okay, and those came, got cut out of what? A 12 foot stick? Yes. So it starts with a 12 foot stick and then what do you do next? Well, we cut it to this size. All then right. we have to face one end so that we have a perfect end. All right. And we take that end and we have a perfect end here. We slide it into our our jig, tighten it, tap it, tighten it again, and then we run the program. Okay, now how many of these are going to be used in, uh, say, a whole battery? So the little battery packs, so right now we're designing two battery packs, one with 60 cells and the other one with 130 cells. Right. So there has to be 120 of these in the small pack, yep. 260 of them in the bigger pack. And so Just this part. And so each one gets machined individually several times because it's not just cutting it and shaking right. it. So we start off, this is the first operation. All right. The second operation is in... Um, and about 40 of them we have to drill holes through here because there's going to be a screw that passes through a bar that holds this up against the cooling plate. Got it. And for all of them we need to turn them on their sides and drill three holes through each of them. So that'll be the next operation that we do after we finish. Now is that the this. smallest piece that you got to deal with? Nope. So the smaller piece is this, which is the lower terminal battery block. So for each cell, there's one of these on each side, so two of them. This starts out as a 12 inch stick. We cut it to this size, about three and a half to four inches. Yep. Then we have to face it down on one side so that it's this exact width. Yep. Then we have to face one end so that again it fits into a jig similar to the other piece we just did. Get it down there, drill and tap. There's two different size holes here. Each of them has to be drilled and tap with a different size drill and tap. And that has to happen two times every cell in the battery. So if there's 192 cells, that has to happen 394 times. So those beautiful exterior pieces that we looked at, those are actually the easiest thing to make as far as number of operations for each individual piece, right? Number of operations, but the problem with those is you have to be absolute because this, if I make a mistake, and mess this up, who cares? Make another one. If I make a mistake on one of the bigger pieces, that's 120 hours start over. Just again. done. All right, well, thanks, man. Thank you for the update. Whoa, look at all these pieces. I suppose I should help. All right, so let's, let's take a look at some of the more subtle steps involved here. So after all the honeycombing was done for weight reduction, and I apologize for the noise, but the bloodshed is noisy. Now, Jack is machining the four bore holes that will allow the uh, rods to slide through all of these bars which are used to hold the cells in place and also act as thermal conductors, not only for the heat coming from each individual cell, but then to dump it into the three separate cooling plates that make up the uh, outer edge and the center plate of the battery. So Alright, so that's finished. So Jack has to peel all the lubricant and the debris away, brings it over here, puts a new piece in, has to center it, press down, lock it, start the program, and then, as if that's not enough, to make sure the rods can slide freely through the holes and there's nothing to bind each separate hole 
gets individually beveled by hand. Sorry for the focus problem, guys. I think you get the point. Okay, but now that's not enough. So after that, all of these pieces get taken over to the tumbler. So we're going to go over and take a look at the inside of the tumbler. And I'll turn it off so you can hear. So this is an industrial tumbler. And it's used to deburr the pieces. And so inside this medium, as you can see, the pieces circulate right the top. And these are the individual pieces and all sharp edges are removed. Everything's rounded and the parts are ultra clean. So now, isn't that enough? No. Once that's done, then we go over here and we cruise over here. And this may seem a little manual, and it is, but the next thing we do is because the back edge of this plate is going to come into contact with the cooling plate, it's got to be as flush as it can get to fit. So we take this ultra flat granite block. This thing is flat to something like what is it, Jack? How flat is this thing? It's it's been tested to what? Oh, uh, like one million. Well, eight one hundred thousand. Eight one hundred thousand. Eight one hundred thousand is flat. So we use an adhesive back paper on top, and then individually the part is slid back and forth gently over and over because this thing is so flat and these parts are flat until you get to where you have a very smooth edge. You can see there's a little bit of a dip in the center. That's because the extruded aluminum pieces were not absolutely square. So this will continue like this until we have a completely shiny and smooth flush surface that will then press against the metal plate to conduct all the heat it can. Wow, and that's the big parts. We haven't even talked about all of these little parts. So what the guys are doing right now is they're making the cooling plates that will sandwich every single cell. And they're doing them, what is it, 10 at a time, guys? 10 at a time. And so they're drilling the holes for the rods to slide through, and then they're cutting each of the plates to the exact dimensions. So now, here is a set of plates that have been done with a cell actually sandwiched in the middle of it. You can see here, that's the way it's going to be. So every cell will have these. Now these bolts are just here to hold these plates. There will be steel rods or aluminum rods that run the entire length of the pack to hold everything in place. But all those little bars we were showing, here's the bars as you can see here. And then like I said, there's the cell sandwiched in the center. And those plates will transfer the heat to the bars, these bars and everything back up against the cooling plates, the three cooling plates. And there you have it. This step is to make essentially the bus bar connectors. These are the plates that are going to connect the tabs on the top of the batteries together. And these need to have six holes uh, drilled in them to hold the tabs and then two threaded or tapped holes uh, to secure them. So the first step in making these is to place them in this jig, center it, tighten the jig down gently. You don't want to tighten it down too tight or it'll bow the piece. And then we hit cycle start. This isn't very exciting, but it does give you a sense of what's involved in making something as complex as a liquid cool, high performance EV battery designed for a lightning rod, top of the rod.